that's inherently, uh, you know, motor racing can be a dangerous sport. So uh, if you if you dwell on that, you should stay home, you know, become a dentist or something. Racing legend Mario Andretti sharing his thoughts on the dangers of being a Formula One driver. Four decades ago, he was on the grid for the sport's first foray into Las Vegas. In 1981, the world's premier racing series put together a track and a parking lot across along the strip. The result was the Caesars Palace Grand Prix. <laughs> A series of hairpin turns along less than 2.3 miles in the middle of a parking lot. Formula One's debut in Las Vegas was filled with challenges, not just for the drivers, but for the people working to make it a reality. Bill Weinberger was the unlikely man chosen to lead that charge. It all began when his boss at Caesars World watched the 1976 edition of the Monaco Grand Prix. He said, well, what do you know about auto racing? I said, nothing. He said, what do you know about Formula One? I said, less. He said, good, you're the man. The original goal was to build a course that ran onto the strip, over to Flamingo, and then onto the I-15 on-ramp, which would be modified to run back onto Caesars Palace property. That meant working with Clark County, the state, and federal government. And they all gave me a resounding no. Unequivocal. You cannot do that. Today, the land between Caesars Palace and Spring Mountain Road is home to high-rise hotels and high-end shops. But in 1981, it was an empty lot. And most importantly, it was all private land. Bill worked out a deal to rent that space and sat down with the F1 CEO, Bernie Ecclestone, to cram in a track long enough to meet F1 standards. And literally, it was I put my hand down and I drew the map around my left hand like this. The result was a track loaded with tight turns that put tremendous strain on the cars. The first race was set for October 17, 1981, the final event on the Formula One calendar. American racing legend Mario Andretti took part in that event and every Caesars Palace Grand Prix that would follow. Indeed it was, uh, it was very technical, but uh, it was also uh, very tough um, on the equipment. He describes a track that left little time to rest. He estimates that a complete race would have involved 6,000 gear shifts, 2,000 more than anything on the modern Formula One schedule. He would know from experience had he ever completed the race in an F1 car. Both the years that I drove, whether with Alfa Romeo or Ferrari, I had a real suspension failure. <laughs> In some ways, the race was a major success. It drew uh, 38,000 people the first year, which at the time was the largest crowd ever to watch a sporting event in the state of Nevada. It's Mr. Wayne Newton. <laughs> and the atmosphere was classic Las Vegas. We always had uh, a lot of uh, celebrities you know, walking around in pits and presenting trophies. Tom Jones was there, Sammy Davis was there, Paul Newman was the chairman of the race. But in the end, the race failed in the one area Caesars Palace needed it to succeed. The whole event was put on to get 12 new high rollers. They didn't show up. Bill calls the race a financial failure, but not a disaster. The cost to run it was just $7 million. That's equal to $23 million in today's dollars. After two years with Formula One, Caesars Palace hosted the U.S.-based IndyCar series in 1983 and 84 before scrapping the event for good. The fact that uh, it was in a restricted area, if you will, um, you could see it, it didn't have much of a life. But the race's legacy lived on for years. We literally filled a room at Caesars Palace with all, everything that was written and published all around the world. There's a darn good reason to go to Vegas. I can tell you that. My wife loved it for sure.
After failing to finish the race in Formula One, Andretti went on to win the 1983 Caesars Palace Grand Prix in an Indy car and finished second in 1984. And just how different was the old F1 race from the new one? Back in 1981, the fastest lap at Caesars Palace was just over a minute and 20 seconds around the 2.27 mile circuit. That's good for an average speed of 113 miles an hour. Projections for this year's race show a minute 33 second lap time around a 3.8 mile circuit. The average speed is expected to be 147 miles an hour.